103.2 Dublin City FM. Our email address is admin at dublincityfm.ie. Good afternoon and welcome to Talk Travel with me, Annie O'Reilly and Catherine Tunney. Really nice to have your company today. Thinking of travelling to the States, Mary McKenna, MD of Tour America, will be filling us in later. Also cruising with Tour America, Mary will be filling us in on their new Admiral status. Delighted to welcome Maria Golpe into studio, product manager with Camino Ways. They're opening up a new route in Italy, so Maria will be talking to Catherine and I about that later. Call us on 865 8020 or text us on 087 977 1032 and you can also email talk travel at Dublin City FM IE. Well, first of all, Maria Golpe, you are product manager with CaminoWays.com. Thank you for joining us in studio today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, now listen, this time of year, it's November. Everything is very dreary outside. So people are coming up to Christmas. They're thinking Christmas presents, new ideas, new travel destinations. And I know Camino Ways have come up with a new destination, which has been launched in the market. <coughs> but before we, which is all about walking and or cycling through, Italy from England and it's called franchiginaways.com I'm so glad you said that because <laughs> I've had I've been writing this f- phonetically here in the <laughs> studio trying to get that name right so it's franchi franchiginaways.com yeah. okay I got the Italian staff in the office to train me because I had trouble with that as well ah uh, great <laughs> it's not well, an easy one to remember <laughs> no it certainly isn't so it is a name one will remember though, yeah, which is the most home. important yeah. <laughs> So listen, let's first of all talk about Camino Ways and your company. You're product manager. So can you tell us about Camino Ways? I am. Uh, well, CaminoWays.com, we're a company based in Dublin city centre. And uh, our, our main product, our specialist product is the Camino de Santiago in northern Spain that most people will be familiar mm. with. Uh, the thing that most people don't realise is like people talk about the Camino as if there's only one route. But there's actually many routes, it's not just one. Uh, I suppose people, uh, when they talk about the Camino, they think about the way the movie with Martin Sheen mm. or other movies out there. And um, But it, that is only one of the routes, the one that starts in the Pyrenees and cuts across the Meseta, ar- across the La Rioja wine region, and then into Galicia, which is about 900 kilometers away. But there's, so, there's many other routes as well, and uh, so we, we sent loads of people travelling on the Camino on that famous French route, but also in other routes like, for example, the Northern Way across the Basque Country, or the Portuguese Way coming all the way from Lisbon and Porto all up to Santiago, or even from Seville, there's a, there's a route called the Via de la Plata, which starts in Seville in the south of Spain, and heads north to Salamanca and then into Santiago de Compostela. So So many people don't realize there are many, many routes and and they're all very different. So we're just trying to to show people as well that the Camino is more than just one Camino, that there's many options and and they all have their unique experiences there for for them. I suppose um, what would be the most popular route that people would take from Ireland on the Camino? Uh, well, it's interesting you ask me that because uh, back in the day, in the Middle Ages, when pilgrimage was the thing to do for especially the well-off classes because it wasn't open or accessible to everybody, people used to sail. They used to take a boat from Dublin, from St. James's Gate or from Watford or indeed other ports in the south of Ireland, Cork or Wexford. And they used to sail to the north of Galicia, to the port cities of A Coruña or Ferrol, or even smaller ports as well. And then they used to walk from there. So today you can actually do that that trail as well. I'm not sure about the boat connections now, but <laughs> you can certainly fly there and walk to Santiago. But today, what most Irish people are doing are is the French way, the one that we see in movies such as The Way with Martin Sheen, starting in the Pyrenees. What we're seeing a lot is groups of friends going on the Camino and uh, doing a little bit every year. They don't want mm. to do 900k, they can't take the, ta- the time off work. So what they do is they do, for example, saint jean pied de port to Pamplona one year, over a, over a week, and then the next year they take it where they left it. So then eventually they reach Santiago 
in the next few years. Isn't that mm. amazing? And what a great way to do a holiday with your friends. Yeah. Yeah, to pick up from where we were last year. Yeah. And to do another week. It's it's just a great way of doing your holidays. And you've something to do every day. Yeah. We see lots of families as well. Yeah. Doing it with, with kids. Now, not very young kids, but uh, they seem to be keen as well on doing it by bike. Mm. Although, so this was yeah. a new thing which I didn't know that people actually could do. We were actually, talking about this all yeah, fair, yeah. That you can actually cycle, cycle it, it if you want to do that. Yeah, you can cycle it. The only re- the requirement, uh, there's a certificate you get in Santiago when you complete your pilgrimage. I it's love that the idea of the passports being stamped as yeah. you go. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's a and sense of achievement, isn't it? Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 yeah, you get your passport stamped along the way. <clears> so uh, there's two requirements, different requirements if you're walking or if you're cycling. If you're walking, you need to walk at least 100k okay. into Santiago, the last 100k. To be Which, able by to the get way, is from Dublin down to Ross Lair. <laughs> just to, <laughs> just, to, give you an idea. just yeah. to give you an idea, it's not down the road. Okay. Not, uh, it, yeah. sounds, it sounds easier when it's in Spanish <laughs> or French. <laughs> Dublin, Ross Lair, you got me there. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you, yeah. Get it, you get it in your head a yeah. little bit more clearly. It's no yeah. harm, yeah. I'm not good at K's. I know Dublin, Ross Lair. Yeah. 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 Having exactly. cycled it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you do it by bike, eh, you need to do 200 to be able to get the, the Compostela stamp. certificate. Oh, that's yeah. fair enough, I suppose. Mm, that's fair enough. Yeah, it yeah. is fair enough. Mm. Now, with the Camino, it's such a popular route, um, the pilgrim route. You've now launched another uh, holiday pilgrim walk. Can we you have, tell us about it? Yeah, we have. Um, what we're seeing is that uh, the Camino has become very popular in the past few years. Uh, like even the, today I was having a look at the news and um, the stats came out for the pilgrims that have w- done the Camino this year so far and it's over 200,000 and uh, that's that's more than, than the whole amount of pilgrims that did the Camino last year so I think the Camino is helping rediscover other trails in other parts of Europe that's, that's what's happening so there's this other pilgrim trail in that starts in Canterbury and finishes in Rome called the Via Francigena and it's also being redis- rediscovered let's say because it is a trail that's been there since the Middle Ages as well but people didn't know about it which is exactly what happened with the Camino de Santiago as well the Camino de Santiago was followed by pilgrims mm. in the Middle Ages but then if you talk to someone 50 years ago they didn't know what it was then in the 80s there was this priest that recovered the the trail and started educating people about it and it became this huge event. Well that's really interesting because I was actually just about to ask you that. How or where did they find that these trails had been done in pilgrim times and these priests had you know have brought them back to our day and saying you know these are the walks that people did. Where, where was all that information? Well, in the case of the Camino, it was this priest from a small little parish in Galicia called Ocebreiro, which is on the Camino de Santiago. And he was a, he was quite academic. So he studied a lot about the Camino when during his priesthood, let's say. So he thought it was a very important trail because nobody knew about it and uh, it had been happening for for hundreds of years and and he found it quite amazing that that nobody in Galicia or Spain or indeed the rest of Europe knew about it. So I think he made it his own little mission mm. to to bring the Camino back to people back to, to the life. people. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. back to mm-hmm. life. So he actually this is a very funny story. Uh, he actually went around in his Citroen, apparently he had this old banger of a car mm-hmm. in the 80s, and he went around the whole north of Spain painting the yellow arrows. So we we owe him the yellow arrows on the Camino de Santiago to this priest, Elias Baliña, who was the priest, the parish priest in Nocebreiro, which is this mountain village in in Galicia. That's How wonderful. interesting mm. is that? So when we get to this new um, this new walk which you've launched, Franchi Gina Franchi Ways, Gina Ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, where wh- where was the historical evidence? You know, was, again, was this in Rome by some priest or? Well, in the case of the Via Francigena, uh, Rome was also, also one of the main pilgrimage destinations. Of it's, course, it, it always yeah. has been, yeah. along with Jerusalem yeah. and then Santiago de Compostela. But Rome was the main one. 
and pilgrims have been traveling to Rome forever and ever. But then in the 10th century, there was this, the Archbishop of Canterbury followed this particular trail from Canterbury Cathedral in, in Kent across the northern the north of France into Switzerland, down the Oster Valley, Tuscany, and then into Rome. And what was different in this case was that uh, that journey was put into paper. So that was the first, let's say, oh. guide of the Via Francigena. Mm. Oh, okay, so that had been historically yeah. sort of reserved there. Yeah. It was in the, right, yeah. okay. Yeah, so that was in the 10th century. Yes. And that is roughly the itinerary that we follow today for okay. the Via Francigena, saving some some places where maybe this big motorway is being built, so the, the route needs to be moved so you're not walking along the motorway. Buses yeah. Or <laughs> yellow arrow yeah. that way. Yeah, exactly. So what's been the reaction in the market to this new destination? Uh, well, we're finding that people are really interested by the Via Francigena, especially people who have already done the Camino. Yeah. And they want to keep walking. They What we find is that people who want to go and do the Camino, they're not particularly good at walking. They're not particularly active. It seems to be open to everybody. It's a little bit of an adventure. So once they try once, they want to keep going. Mm. So some of them, they want to try different routes on the Camino. Some of them, they want to try something different. So what we're finding at the moment is that the section in Tuscany seems to be very popular because it is it is quite an easy route. It's all from town to, from town, to town, small towns, rolling hills. It's not particularly challenging. It should okay. be a good starter route, I'd say. Yeah, it's a yeah. starting route. For the first and time we've, girl. Mm, yeah. yeah, and we've created a, a bit of an easy version as well, where you can cover less kilometres, so you can actually get to enjoy the little towns. Some of them are Which very are beautiful. Which are so beautiful in Tuscany. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, the wine and the food. The food <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go walking at seven in the exactly. morning if you're just about to tuck into a gorgeous exactly. breakfast in Tuscany? Yeah. That was the idea. The idea was that instead of walking <laughs> 20k, you can walk 10. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can just go and enjoy the trattery uh, down the road and have, have a, a little pizza. walk. walk but off does, lunch. That, does that show you that people in travel are looking for more things to do now that you know this is a really different way of doing your holiday you meet people along the way you can have friends join you for a couple of kilometers if you want (laughs) you meet new Mm -hmm. people the kids can go there's action every day it can be therapeutic because you can walk on your own it seems to offer a huge amount yeah, I think people are a bit tired of the usual package holiday. Yeah. They want to go on holiday, but they, they want to do something. They want to feel that they're connecting with the local culture, yeah. that they are learning something, not necessarily having to go to museums because it's not everybody cup, cup, of, cup of tea, mm. as they say. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, it's an easy way of connecting with the local culture in an easy way, active you don't you don't necessarily want to go in you know the beach holiday is a little bit mm. it's a little bit passe i think yeah. personally judging by what what people are asking although i do like the beach myself i have to say <laughs> well you know there is there's there is there's a moment for both yeah because yeah. yeah, yeah, if you're working really both. hard there's nothing better to but it's about the journey on. that's what we were saying off yeah. and it's about the journey mm. yeah i think people find it therapeutic in the sense that it is a little bit of a um, of a, of a philosophy you can bring back to your own life. Mm. We are too busy going from work home to the exactly. supermarket, cooking yeah. dinner. Yeah. And uh, what a holiday like the Camino or indeed any other walking holiday, what it teaches you is that it's all about a step of the, taking a step at the time, about taking day by day, enjoying the day, day by, by day, day instead of just the destination. Mm. The Camino is not just about reaching Santiago. Even though Santiago is a brilliant city, if I must say so. But it is about enjoying the journey, enjoying the people you meet along the way. So I think that's why people find it it has a a sort of a spiritual level. And with the Via Francigena, it's not as busy as the Camino. So I think if people are looking for a more social type of event where they want to meet different nationalities, make friends, make special connections. I think the Camino is, is better suited. 
Now, just to ask you um, about accommodation, you can have a choice of accommodation from, you know, bed and breakfast type of accommodation to hotel accommodation. Yeah, uh, traditionally, what most people think about the Camino de Santiago is staying in hostels and rushing, walking at five Mm. in the morning to be the one, the first one at the door of the hostel and not having room because it's too busy. So at CaminoWays.com and FranchiGenoWays.com, what we do is we book hotels. They're not your own, you know, we don't want to put off people thinking that that they're big chain hotels. They're small family run hotels that are, have a, some sort of unique character. Obviously, along the Camino, there'll be towns where there's more options because they're bigger towns. The smaller towns will have less options. But uh, we do work with, with small family run hotels. And then we also have, in most sections, we have an option to upgrade to four star or country cottages along the Camino de Santiago as well, or even Paradores, which is the um, the Spanish company. It's a Spanish owned company. They they basically have a network of heritage yes. buildings. Yes, we've oh, had yeah. them on actually, yeah, the Paradores. Yeah, yeah. Very, yeah. 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 a lot Wonderful. of old castles which have been yeah, converted castles, into monasteries. Hotels. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So on the Camino so de Santiago, there's a lot of choice. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of choice. choice. It depends on the towns, obviously, mm. because some towns are very small. So there'll be less choice, but in the bigger towns or more, more the villages that have a little bit more history and culture behind them, there'll be more options. Well, it seems an absolutely super way. Um, I think the Italian walk now from Canterbury to Rome, it'll be a real adventure for anybody Mm. if they've done the Camino ways to have that different sort of environment and adventure. It's just super. Maria Golpe from CaminoWays.com. Thank you for joining us. Just your contact details. Uh, well, you can find our contact details at www.caminoways.com and uh, we write we write a blog every day and we're on Facebook as well, facebook.com slash Camino Ways and we're also on Twitter at Camino Ways. So you so can follow us. You're you easily us, found. Yeah, so we're easily Camino. found. And we're actually running a, an interesting competition we, we want to create a very special calendar for 2014. So we're asking people to send us their pictures of the Camino. If in the tw- We'll choose tw- 12 winners to be on the Camino Oh, that's calendar. super. Great. So, well, we're yeah. delighted to if put that out to... on air today on Talk Travel. Marina Golpe, thank you very much for coming into the show today. Me.